ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't been able to hear us so far this uh, this game, I really apologize. We appear to have had a, a major malfunction here with our uh, audio, and uh, we are just so stinking uh, sorry for you not being able to hear us here. Looks like we do have an injured uh, injured jet down on the field. And with that, we are going to go and hear a word from our sponsors. Ortho Plus is an orthopedic urgent care. If you go to a regular emergency room, you're going to be evaluated by somebody who does everything. With orthopedic urgent care and with Keith Holloman, you're getting an orthopedic trained physician assistant. And it looks like they are helping him off the field. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, once again, we do apologize for not having the audio going. That's a uh, yeah, that's uh, that's on me, honestly. That's all that is. So uh, it's coming off the field. Panthers are going to go back on offense here, and uh, it's going to be third down and nine to go here. And the jet walking off is number seventy-five, Corey Bailey. Man, you just really hate to see anybody get hurt here. Yeah. Here's the snap. Joey wants to throw it. He lets it fly, but it's going to be just to the left of Braden Palmer, so it's going to be fourth down here. Looks like the Panthers are sending on their punting formation here. Braden Palmer, number 14, who missed that last reception, will be the punter tonight for the Hera Panthers. And uh, it seems like Western Heights so far on the receiving have been a little shaky. Let's see if they can pull it together this time and run it down the field. Any football game, you know, has three phases to it. You got offense, you have defense, you have special teams. And if you can't do well on special teams, you can't do well in a football game. And here is a beautiful booming punt by Braden Palmer, and it's going to roll. Oh, it's going to come to rest at the four-yard line. What a beauty, absolute beauty. So the Jets are going to start pinned back deep into their own territory. First and ten, Jet football. Hair so far has been working really nice on all fronts this game. Wow, they sure far are back there. First and ten here for the Western Heights Jets, officially spotted at the four-yard line. Panthers are going to pin back their ears, and they're going to look for a safety. Western Heights has two receivers to the left. And here's the snap. It's a high snap. They're going to hand it off up the middle, and he is going to get wow. absolutely Rocked on that play. Looks like it might have been a gain of zero. Can you guess who made the tackle? Was it Walker Johnson? It was Walker Johnson. <laughs> he went in there like a bullet fired from a gun. He lowered his shoulder, and he made just a perfect textbook tackle. It's actually going to be right at, looks like no gain on the play. Second and ten here for the Jets. Was it number five he tackled? I, uh, I'm not sure. I have to say, Walker tackled him pretty fast. I wasn't able to see. And here's the snap. They're going to try the exact same thing. He's going to run out to the right of the line, and he is going to lower his shoulder, and he's going to maybe pick up one. That was number five on the carry. And that number five is Derek Washington. It's going to bring up third and nine here for the Western Heights Jets. If they can get out of the situation without a safety, they will be in good shape. Panthers just absolutely playing lockdown defense so far. They've got an empty backfield here. They're going to throw the football. 
pass rush is coming in. Pocket is collapsing. He rolls out. He wants to throw it, and he is going oh. to be running around in the end zone, and he is going to be tackled after maybe another pickup of one or two. That was the quarterback, Alan Thompson. He tried to make something work. It just wasn't there. Western Heights is going to send, in, send on their punting team. Once again, Mr. Jackson Wilson is back deep to receive for the Hera Panthers. Since you missed it last time, we're going to have to uh, re-talk about our players of the week to watch here, which is just fine. I don't man mind bragging on these boys a little extra today. Here's the snap. It's a low snap. Punt is out, and it's going to bounce. It's going to be scooped up by Jackson Wilson. He's at the 30. He's at the 20, and he'll be pushed out of bounds right at the 20-yard line. A great return of about 30 yards there for Jackson Wilson. And that kick was made by Jay Sean Lewis. It's going to be first and 10 here for the Hera Panthers. While we're here, why don't we just talk about Walker Johnson a little bit? We uh, already talked about him earlier, but I guess the microphones weren't on, which is honestly just a little bit embarrassing for me. That's just fine. Week one MVP unanimously, right? 47 yards, 9.4 yards per carry. Okay, you're thinking he only rushed for 47 yards. What's the big deal? Check this out. On defense, three solo tackles for loss, six tackles total. And I actually think that stat might be a little bit too low from what I saw, but that's just what we had there on maxpreps.com. Three total touchdowns on the ground. This man scored by himself 18 points. Do you know how many touchdowns he had last season? How many, Patrick? He had three. Oh, he okay. matched his touchdown total from last season here last week against the McLeod Redskins. Western Heights is sending their defense back onto the field. There was a penalty there, and it looked like it was against the Panthers. So they're going to start their drive right at the 23-yard line. Do you know what that penalty was for, Patrick? I do not. Now, here's the snap. Or excuse me, here's the whistle. The clock is winding. Three minutes, 56 six seconds left to go in the first quarter. I guess uh, Western oh. Heights has the football. I'd okay, so... Here's what happened. The uh, There was a defensive penalty on the punt, which gave Western Heights the uh, first down. Okay. I looked out there. I'm like, well, where's where's Joey? Why is why is the defense lined up as the offense and vice versa? It's because uh, Western Heights still has football. They got two receivers to the left, one receiver to the right. Excuse me, switch that. Two receivers to the right, one receiver to the left. One man in the backfield. Here's a snap. It's a high snap, but he's looking to throw. He's facing pressure. Walker Johnson is running him down. There's a flag. He is coming up the sideline. He's going to be pushed out right about the 35-yard line. We'll see where the hold was, or excuse me, where the penalty was. If I had to guess, it might be a hold. That was Alan Thompson on the run. Alan Thompson, that young man has some wheels. So far, he's been able to turn up the Jets. And no, no pun intended. <laughs> or actually, you know what? Yes, pun intended. He's been able to really turn it on and escape this lightning fast Panthers defense, which is a credit to him. Let's see what the official call is here for the penalty. Block in the back against the offense, so that's going to back him up. So that's going to be a second down and about 20 yards to go here. Maybe closer to 15.
They're going to call it a second and 20 official here. And here is the snap. They want to throw the ball, but he is going to be sacked. That's going to be – oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. He handed off the ball. There is a flag down on the play. That's probably going to be unsportsmanlike conduct on either the Panthers or the Jets. And it's going to look like they will assess the penalty against the Panthers. Mm -hmm. If I had to guess, there was probably something said there um, when they made the tackle that the ref was not so fond of. So now it's going to be third down and five here for the – excuse me, they're going to give me the uh, automatic first down. So it's going to be first and ten for the Jets from the 27-yard line. Well, no, it looks like it's still third down. The refs are trying to figure out what's going on here. I am just confused as you are there at home, so we do apologize for that. Reminds me a bit of last game. So while we're waiting on them to make a decision, well, there, there's the decision. So they're going to officially be... First and 10 here for the Western Heights Jets at the 28-yard line. And here's the snap. We're going to throw a little running back screen, but the pass is going to be incomplete out intended towards number two. Nick Holmes. Second and ten here for the Western Heights Jets. Three minutes and 17 seconds left to go here in the first quarter of play. Of course, the clock did stop due to the incomplete pass. Now here's the snap. They're going to try and hand it off. He's going to run to the left, and he's going to be found by Walker Johnson after a pick of about three. Tackled out of bounds. That was number five. Derek Washington. It's going to come up to be third down, and officially looks like seven to go. Panthers just need to make one more stop here, and uh, they'll get the ball back. Derek Washington and Jalen Colbert beside Alan Thompson in the back. And the Western Heights Jets are going to take a timeout, and so will we. Ladies and gentlemen, don't go anywhere. It's Panther football on Friday nights. I am tech. I am tech. I am Tech. I am Tech. We are Tech. And ladies and gentlemen, we are back here. Let's talk about, you know him, you love him, number 16, Mr. Joey McLaughlin. We can be looking for the Panthers to significantly open up the passing game here. Okay, they've got the opportunity to be able to play some good football, throw the ball all across the yard. Joe McLaughlin loves this kind of thing. Last year, or last season, he had zero. Last season, good grief, I cannot talk. Last week, he had zero interceptions and a .429 completion rate. 
Let's talk about number 21 senior running back Devin McRae, okay? Good grief. He's a workhorse. He had 197 yards on the ground. He only had one touchdown, but Walker Johnson honestly took most of the touchdowns last, e which last week, which is fine because Devin McCraig has the most rushing yards in this division. And we're back for more football in action. It's going to be third down at seven here. I wouldn't be super surprised to see the uh, Western Heights Jets try to tr have some trickery here, maybe a trick play something. They're going to snap the ball. They're going to try that running back screen once again, and he is going to be lit up after a gain of just maybe one. That was St. Mars Sanders for the catch. It's going to be fourth down and seven here for the Western Heights Jets as they send on their punting unit. There's one more Panther we need to talk about, and that is Luke Sellers. He had a whopping 30 yards per catch last week against the McLeod Redskins. Just an absolute dominant performance there. And we just needed to make sure that we gave him a proper shout-out here. Now the uh, Western Heights Jets are on to punt. Here's a snap. It's high. It's over oh. his head. He's going to try and pick it up, but he is going to get hit right about the 10-yard line, and the Panthers are going to have the ball first and 10 at the Western Heights 10-yard line. Honestly, this uh, Western Heights uh, special teams has just been a disaster here. That was number 31, Brandon Bogle. And now, of course, we do need to say a huge, massive shout-out to Mr. Jason Turner for providing those pictures that he gave us to use on those graphics. Some amazing photos. There. Check out Smudged Photo on Facebook, and if you need senior pictures, or really any kind of pictures, he will be more than happy, I believe, to help you out with that. That's just what he does, and he does a fantastic job of it. Now they're going to spot this ball here at the 11-yard line, so the Panthers have eight plays to get into the end zone. Here's the snap. They're going to hand it off to Dev McCraig. He's going to run straight into a pile of Western Heights Jets, and he's going to fall ahead for a gain of maybe four or five there on the play. The main jet on that was number 78, Reggie Wilson. Second down and about 60 0 here. Here's a snap. It's a high snap. Joey's going to fall on it. That is definitely not what you want to see. That's going to bring up third down and about nearly 20 yards here to go. Look for Joey to throw the ball on this play. Walker Johnson is checking in at running back. I'm not sure how his shoulders are not just absolutely sore by this point from all the people he has hit so far tonight. Here is the snap. Joey's going to drop back in the pocket. He's going to throw it. He's got a man open, and it's going to be intercepted, and he's going to be brought down. They're probably going to call him brought down in the goal line. That was number two, Nick Holmes, with the interception. Joey McLaughlin's first interception of the season. But you know why he got an interception? Because he was trying to throw the football. Can you can you blame a man for trying to throw the football down the field? No, you cannot. There is a beauty in playing all out smash mouth football. You pound the rock, you shove the football down people's throats. But also it's really fun to watch these young men go out there and sling the rock all over the yard. Yes. And so, you know, you get an interception, but if you're gonna get an interception, you should do it against Western Heights. It's going to be first and ten from the one-yard line here for the Western Heights Jets. And they have been in this situation before, and last time it resulted in a punt. Can I just say, though, I'm just in love with these Western Heights uniform combos. I just love that blue color. Here's the snap. It's a high snap. He's going to keep it himself. Oh. But he's, he's trying to escape. He's trying to escape. They can just get him in there. That's a safety, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think he got out. I don't think he did. That was number nine, Alan Thompson. They're going to spot the ball at the one-yard line, which I think is incredibly generous there to Western Heights. It is. I am almost positive that his knee was down in the end zone, but what can he do? Probably a mercy rule. 
So they're going to try again, second and ten here for the Western Heights Jets. Panthers got them backed up. They're on their heels. They're just looking for a miracle. Here's the snap. They want to throw the football. He's going to let it fly. And that's going to be oh. intercepted. Back-to-back -back interceptions. And on that interception, it looks like um, it's hard to see from where I am, but I think that's going to be number eight for the Panthers. And, of course, number eight is Brody Byers. And it looks like he was going for number four, Samaj Sanders, on the Jets. That pass was tipped and then intercepted, which is just something you love to see. Great defense there by the Panthers. They're back at it. They're on the red, red zone. It's going to be first and goal from the five-yard line. And you know what? I'll take a touchdown over a safety any day of the week. Yes. Any day of the week. And that's going to be the end of the quarter. Your Panthers lead the Western Heights Jets 13-0. to Don't go anywhere, folks. Yeah. We're going to have a quick word from our sponsor. The way you used to access health care previously, I think that's kind of out of date. I think Ortho Plus and Calvin were trying to get patients access to him and then have the assurance that you'll be referred to the right people. That's why I think the partnership is so good. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, for some more of that football in action. Let's just take a look at some of these gorgeous pictures provided by Mr. Jason Turner from last week. Listen, I love college football. Do you love college football, William? I love a ton of college football, especially the Sooners. And listen, if you love college football, I just have to give a big, massive shout-out to my favorite college football podcast. Okay, It's called The Late Kick with Josh Pate. And he does this thing where if you publicly promote his show, which is what I'm doing now, he might send you a chalice of supremacy as an award, as a prize for just being so awesome. They just hit 200,000 subscribers. There was about 1,500 people who watched the stream last week. And so if they got another 1,500 people, listen, all I'm saying is go subscribe to The Late Kick with Josh Pate on Spotify, on YouTube, wherever podcasts are found. Go give that man a follow. He deserves it. You will know absolutely everything about college football. First and ten for the Hera Panthers here. They are now knocking on the door of the other end zone after the change of quarter. Got three uh, three receivers on the field, one to the left, two to the right. Here's the snap. Joey's just going to keep yeah. it himself, and he is going There's to waltz no in there. untouched for another Panthers touchdown. Panthers in pay dirt. Looks like Nick Holmes was trying to get him, but he was just too late. And that's going to bring the score up right now to 19-0 to for the Panthers. And it looks like the Panthers looks like they want to kick the extra point. And also, we need again like to apologize for the interesting camera angles tonight. We're trying to arrange this so that we can uh, have a level playing field and also not get the window in the way. So here's the kick, and the kick is going to be blocked, and so it's going to remain 19-0 Panthers lead. And with the change of uh, possession, we're going to... Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Stream with Pioneer iVideo and more. Live, recorded, on demand, all in HD. Easily find and watch your favorite shows and movies anywhere, on any device, perfect for the entire family. And easy to use. Enjoy Pioneer iVideo today. The sun is setting in the western sky here in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And I've been to a lot of places. I've been to Dallas. I've been to Nashville. I've been to New York. I've been, I've been everywhere. And I tell you what, there is not a city on this earth that is more beautiful than Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. The Panthers now lead 19-0. to zero. If you are just joining us, my name is Patrick Hofeld, and I am joined by my brilliant co-host, William Little. And it's uh, Panther football on Friday nights. After the uh, extra kick was blocked, 
number 87, of course, our sophomore kicker. He is looking to uh, looking to kick the ball away, give the ball to the other team, so the Panthers can show off on defense once again. Of course, that is Brendan Smith, uh, kicker tonight. There's the whistle, and there's the kick. It's a pretty good kick. It's going to be fielded about the 20-yard line, and he's going to slip and fall. And that was number two, Nick Holmes, on the catch. That ball is going to be spotted right about the 18-yard line for the Western Heights Jets. Harris has been playing this game pretty tight in the Western Heights end of the field. With about 82 yards to go before they reach the end zone, the uh, Western Heights Jets have a long way to march here against the stout Panthers defense. And honestly, I, I do feel bad for Nick Holmes because sometimes when you field the football, the turf monster just reaches up and grabs you. Yep. It happens in high school. It happens in college. It happens in the National Football League. The turf monster is a revered foe of every single football player. Western Heights comes out with a trips to the left set, but they're going to run the ball, and he is going to be brought down back behind the line of scrimmage. Call it a loss of about five. That was number five, Derek Washington. In on the tackle was number 17, Rance Ridley there for the uh, Hare Panthers. And as they went to the ball, he was trying to claw that ball out away from them. Western Heights is going to line up with uh, two receivers to the right, two receivers to the left, one man in the backfield alongside the quarterback. That would be Ben Sparks. Here's the snap, and he's going to let it fly, and that's going to be a great completion for maybe a gain of one. That throw was honestly just right on the money, right over the receiver's head. He was able to jump up and catch it. He looks to be a little bit shaken up on the play. That was number two, Nick Holmes. It's going to be second down and nine to go here for the Western Heights Jets. Really a respectable play, but the Panthers' offense was all over it. A Panthers' offense, excuse me, Panthers' defense was all over it. Who knows, Patrick? It might be offense pretty soon. Well, with third and nine to go, if the uh, Jets don't convert here, it probably will be all Panthers' offense. And here's the snap. They're going to want to throw it, but he's going to be facing pressure. Walker Johnson is chasing him down, and he's going to be pulled out of bounds. Looks like no gain on the play there for the Western Heights Jets. Looks like Walker Johnson almost literally threw him into the ref. Walker Johnson is headhunting this evening. He is really out to play some rough and tumble football. Which, uh, if anybody asks us the way football should be played, this is rough, this is a violent sport. That's how it's been for 100 years. That's how it will be for the next 100 years, you know. That's just the name of the game. And Western Heights is going to take a timeout with fourth and nine to go. Don't go anywhere, folks. Another word from our sponsor. It's Friday Nights. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see if we can't get y'all some updated scores from around the state using our Squirtle app here. Now, if you are a fan of high school football like the rest of us, you should download the Squirtle app. They are big sponsors of what we do here. They uh, make all of this possible. And we can look uh, by class is how we can search. Um, you can do all or you can do uh, just uh, by your class. So in our class, Perkins is at Cushing leading 14-0 to in the second quarter which is might honestly be a big upset because Cushing in years past has been really a dominant force. Um, Hera is at Western Heights, as we can see here on the app. Blanchard is at Piedmont, and they're losing 0-14. to 14.
And here's the snap. They're going to want to punt it. It's going to be a high punt, but it's not going to go very far. And it's going to be fielded right about the 41-yard line. Picked up by the Western Heights Jets. Under these stadium lights, we have just a little bit of a more consistent lighting. I'm going to see if we can't make this uh, camera here look just a little bit better for y'all. See if we can. That should be a little bit easier to see for you guys at home. Western Heights Jets are on defense now. Panthers are on offense. They've got two receivers to the left, one receiver to the right, a tight end lined up on the left side, and they're going to hand it off to Devin McCraig, and he's going to fall ahead for about five yards on the gain. Officially, it looks like they're going to give him four yards. Second and six here to go for the Hare Panthers offense. We've got nine minutes and 50 seconds left to go here in the first half of play. In fact, I should uh, probably update the scoreboard, so... Here's the snap. They're going to hand it off to Walker Johnson, and he's going to go to the left, and he's going to try and make a man miss, but he is going to be brought down for no gain. Just a really great textbook tackle there by number 43 for Western Heights. Keziah uh, Howe. Now it's going to be third down and six here for the Hare Panthers. Let's see what they uh, want to try here. And here's the snap. Joey is looking to throw the ball. He lets it fly, and it is dropped. Travis Tabor was the intended receiver. It hit him in the hands, and he just couldn't hold on. Panthers are probably going to have to punt the football here. That was Nick Holmes on the field. It looks like he's doing better now. Bethany is playing Woodward, and they are leading 20 to 0. And Class and SAS dropped almost 70 points on Southeast, which is really just absolutely insane. Uh, Tecumseh is playing Seminole tonight, and uh, Tecumseh and Seminole are the next couple games on Harris roster. Looks like Tecumseh is currently leading 7 to 0. Joey's looking to throw it deep, but he just barely overthrows Luke Seller. That's going to be a turnover on downs. I imagine Chris Bleak wanted to go for that deep pass there because he has faith in this Hare Panthers defensive squad. So far, I think, honestly, Western Heights probably hasn't had more than 30 or 40 yards of total offense here in the first half. Probably not. Western Heights comes out. They've got two receivers to the left, one receiver to the right. They've got two running backs in the backfield. Interesting formation. And they're going to serve as blockers. They're going to try and run it with the quarterback. But he is going to be brought down behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of about six yards. In on the play was number 17, Rance Ridley. And number nine on the Jets, Alan Thompson, the quarterback. Ridley is just having himself a game tonight. I think that's going to be his second tackle for loss for the Panthers. Here's a snap. They're in the same formation. It's a high snap. He lets it fly, but it's going to be well past his receiver. It's going to be about five yards too deep. And that was going towards Tristan Young, number seven on the Jets. 
I really respect uh, what uh, Western Heights is trying to do here on offense. But so far, they have just not been able to get anything going. It's still going to be third down and about 14 yards to go here, 15 yards to go. Looks like you're right about Chris Fleet putting trust in his defense. They're doing excellent this entire game. So far, this Panthers defense has essentially been a brick wall that the Western Heights Jets are trying to run into. Walker Johnson, he wants it bad. He's going to try and shoot the gap. Good grief. Did you see that play? Oh, my goodness gracious. He ran the offensive lineman over, and he got in to make the tackle another five yards behind the line of scrimmage. Good grief. That man is having himself a night. He is. That did you see Did you see what he just did? Yes, that was insane. He tried to time it just right, and he was just a little bit early, so he backed up. As soon as that ball was snapped, he got in there. He literally put an offensive guard on his back, yep. and he – took care of business. It's going to be fourth and 20 now here for the uh, Western Heights Jets after that really just astounding play there by Walker Johnson. Good grief, that man is a wrecking ball. He's a bull in a china shop. And he's out for blood. And it looks like that's going to be the uh, – looks like Western Heights, I think, maybe, is going to take their final time out of the half. And with that, why don't we hear another word from our wonderful sponsors here on Squirtle TV. Don't go anywhere, folks. It is Hair Panther football on Friday nights in Oklahoma. At Maple's Nixon Diesel Horse, we've helped a lot of people. And our goal was to treat each and every person like a friend. And as a friend, we've got your back always. We understand what you're going through. Being lawyers is what we do, but it's not all that we are. We care. We'll stand beside you throughout the entire legal process, not just as lawyers, but as your friends. We are Maples Nicks and Diesel Horst, and we are here to help. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are back, and it's all Panthers here tonight in Western Heights. Looks like uh, Western Heights is on to punt. I don't really know. I think it might have been Western Heights who took the timeout, but maybe it was Hera. So far, Western Heights special teams have been pretty abysmal here. Let's see if they can make a correction and have a good punt. But they cannot. The ball's going to be snapped low. And that was number three, Jay Sean Lewis on the punt. Patrick, it really seems like the Jets are trapped between a rock and a hard place. The rock being the defense and the hard place being the offense. <laughs> I couldn't have said it better myself. Panthers are going to take over first and 10 at Western Heights 20-yard line. I just can't imagine the frustration that uh, Western Heights coaches are feeling on the sideline there because they just can't seem to really do anything on special teams this evening, which I think was the case last season as well. And we haven't been able to see them even uh, attempt a field goal or even an extra point. Well, they haven't left their side of the field yet. Yeah, that's true. Joey takes a snap. He's going to hand it off to Devin. Devin is going to stumble ahead, and he's going to fall right about the 24-yard line. He tried to stay on his feet, but he was just moving too fast. Good when try, you, though. When you get enough power in those legs, that is driving you forward. <laughs> Once you go down, it's hard to stay up because you're going so fast. If I had to guess, he was moving about Mach 2 there. Pretty close to that. Coming up at halftime, we're going to show it again, the uh, hype video made by Mr. Brandon Gibson. Go ahead and check him out on all of his socials. He does some really fantastic work here for this pair of Hair Panther squad. If you're not excited yet, you will be once you see it. Joey's going to throw the ball. Luke it's Sellers caught. is going to catch it. He's going to make a man miss to the outside. He's going to have the first down. It's going to be first and goal. Hair Panthers from about the seven-yard line. And the tackle was made by number 10, Kai Williamson. There's going to be six minutes and 13 seconds left to go here in the first half of play. The clock is stopped because he did go out of bounds. First and 10, no, excuse me, first and goal. They're going to spot him officially at the eight-yard line. Joey's coming into the huddle with a play call. He gives it to his men. They break the huddle. They approach the line, and they are all business this evening. 
They want it bad. They want it bad. They want a touchdown here, and so do we. Two receivers to the right, one receiver to the left. Joey's going to throw it. Luke Sellers is going to catch it. He's going to make his man miss. That's another Panthers touchdown! Good grief. It is all Panthers here. That's Joey's second passing touchdown this evening, which is just really insane. He is turning it on tonight. Patrick, do you think they're going to go for the two points? Um, well, it's really tough to say. You know, ideally you want the score to be 28-0 to zero right now, and it's 25. And so they might just go for one here and try and get the two sometime later. Here, Smith. The kick is up, and the kick is... No good. Well, you can't blame him for trying. Ladies and gentlemen, don't go anywhere. Let's have another word from our sponsor. Big shout out to our, I, I don't know if they're our sponsors or our facilitators or both, but this is Hair Panther Sport. Here, wow, I can I literally can't talk tonight. This is Hair Panther Football on Squirtle.tv. You're watching us live on Hair Panthers.tv. Panthers are up by a quarter century, 25 to zero. Looking to maybe even hang half a hundred here tonight on the Western Heights Jets. Hopefully they can. Smith, after missing the extra point, boots one deep. And it's going to go out of bounds around the 18-yard line. He has been putting some heat into this ball tonight that we didn't see out of him last week. You know, we said all last uh, season that this year was going to be a culmination of all their experiences and their just strength, and they were going to just come out of the gate like a rocket. That's what they're doing right now. <laughs> what do you get when you take a young football team with inexperience and a lot of talent and give them an extra year of development? What do you get? You get your 2023 Hair Panthers. And, and so far, do you know how many points that Hair Panthers defense has allowed this season so far? I'm not sure how many. Zero points. Of course, we're only one and a half games deep now, but I'd say that's a really spectacular trend to keep up. If the Panthers keep playing like this, they have a legitimate shot against Blanchard. They have a legitimate shot against Tuttle. They have a legitimate shot against Newcastle. They have a legitimate shot against Bethany. This Panthers team could make a deep playoff run if they feel so inclined. They've just got to dig deep, play well-disciplined football, find it in themselves to go play like champions and win. And I tell you what, Coach Bleak, he coaches these young men to play well. See, right there, great textbook tackle, right? Number four. And the tackle was on number seven, Tristan Young. Devin McNeil in there to make the tackle. Yeah, like, like I said, Coach Bleak, he, he is like a friend, like a family member, like a big brother to some of these guys out here. He, he treats them like friends. He doesn't treat them like underlings. He builds this rapport with them, and he teaches them how to be young men, and that is just so vital. And that translates to the football field. There's going to be a flag here on the play, and he's going to be pushed out of bounds right about the first down marker. And that run was made by number five, Derek Washington. Well, like I said, I just cannot speak highly enough to Coach Bleak and the things he's doing in this program. This, this program looks completely different than it did two or three years ago when he first got here. I, I really do believe that there has been just a massive culture shift here around the Harrah Panthers. Holding on the offense. Three-yard penalty, three-yard spot. Play second down. Now that's going to be... First here and 18 to go. Second here and 18 to go for the Western Heights Jets following the uh, holding penalty. I think Coach Blake has been doing a great job, especially over the summer, to get them to this point. Honestly, this looks like a completely different group of people than we had on the field last year. <laughs> and that just goes to show how much Coach Bleak is pouring his heart and soul into this team to develop not only just young men, but really just good football players. Western Heights is going to come out in that same formation with uh, two running backs in the backfield. 
Last time they served as blockers for him, but this time he's going to catch a pass. He's going to make a man miss in the open field, but he is going to be hit. It's probably going to go down as a loss on the play. There is a flag on the play there thrown in towards the back. Number seven has uh, having words with the Hair Panthers. I wouldn't be surprised to see an unsportsmanlike conduct. Yep. Waiting to see what the official call is from the uh, for the ref. Refs are having words. And here's the official ruling. Passing play. Unsportsmanlike conduct. On the offense. It's going to be an unsportsmanlike conduct against the offense. If I had to if I had to be willing to bet it would be against number 7 because he was he was over towards the Panthers hu huddle and he was it, it looked like he was saying something. That's just speculation on my part. But, you know, when you see one Western Heights player over by the rest of them and the ref throws a flag, that's just an educated guess. Call it a hypothesis. Yep. And uh, this is going to be third, and uh, what would you say that would be? Uh, about a quarter mile. A quarter mile, yeah. <laughs> a third and just absolutely forever here for the Western Heights Jets. I measure that maybe a half here, a football field. Here, watch Walker Johnson. Oh, my goodness. He got in there, and he disrupted the play. Oh, man. Panthers are just driving him back further and further and further. That was against the quarterback, number nine, Allen Thompson. Did that same thing again, and he's just rushing them. Honestly, Western Heights just seems completely ineffective against the, what the pair Panthers are doing there on defense. This is going to be fourth down, and officially fourth and 38. Part of that is penalties, but also every single snap, the Panthers have gone in there and gotten tackles for loss. You're saying you're not sure how they can handle uh, the Hera defense. I don't think they can handle Walker Johnson himself. And here's the punt. It looks like somebody got a hand on it because it's going to be, oh, man. That punt went about 21 yards. So the Hare Panthers are going to have first and 10 at the 21-yard line. Literally, they're just starting the drive on the in the red zone because of how well the defense is playing. Defense is playing well, and Western Heights is shooting themselves in the foot. With four minutes and eight seconds left to go here, I think the Panthers are going to go up probably up to 31 points at least, if not 32 or 33. Did they even cross the halfway mark? No, no, no they yeah. didn't. Now here's the snap. Joey's going to throw it. Braden Palmer's going to pick it up. And he's going to be north. He stays on his feet. They're going to push oh, him man. in. He didn't get in. It's going to be on the one-yard line. Oh, excuse me. He's actually running south. But I think everybody at home knew what, I, knew what I meant by that. But I think the main guy on the dog pile was number 43, Keziah Howe. The Panthers are really just settling in here to a rhythm. And they're just clicking on all cylinders. I don't know if uh, there's something in the water there in the locker room. I don't know uh, if they've just been lifting extra heavy, but they are on one tonight. Well, if it's the water, I'd like to get me some of that. <laughs> Our first and goal from the one-yard line. Timeout called by the Hare Panthers. Folks, don't go anywhere. As soon as we get back, you're probably going to see a touchdown. Let's hear from our sponsors. Is it time for your school or business to purchase a new phone system? Give the experts at Versatile Networks a call. In most cases, we can provide a phone system with brand new phones for less than your current monthly bill. 
call us for a free quote today. If you need new phones for your home or your business or your school, don't be shy. Reach out to Versatile Networks and they will get you hooked up. Big shout out, big thank you to them for sponsoring this broadcast. Here's the situation, folks. It's 3 minutes, 35 seconds left to go here in the first half of play. Panthers are leading 25-0, to zero, and they have the ball. It's first and goal from the one-yard line. Both teams are taken back to the field. Eleven men on the offense, eleven men on the defense. Joey McLaughlin is in the backfield alongside Devin Craig. Joey, uh, excuse me, Braden Palmer takes the direct snap. And, folks, that's a touchdown. Panthers have done it again. Of course, in a perfect world, it would now be 35-0. to zero. But honestly, the Panthers have had trouble getting their extra points after the touchdown. That's something they're going to need to work on correcting. Yes. They haven't had any luck going for two, and they haven't had any luck kicking field goals. I think they've only gotten one field goal here. I noticed at the beginning of this game, when they missed that first two points, they went straight back to field goals. Who's done attempting it? Kick is up, and it looks like that kick is through the uprights. Good. And it's good. Ladies and gentlemen, your Hair Panthers lead 32 to 0. I don't know if uh, if I'm correct in saying this, but it feels like deja vu to me. It really does, Patrick. Of course, at uh, at half last week, they were leading 36 to 0, but of course they got those two-point conversions. So, yep. honestly, we're in a pretty similar situation. Now, what happened last week is after uh, after halftime, the Panthers did go ahead and put in all the freshmen, and so there wasn't any scoring after that. But we'll see if Coach Bleak does that again here this week. Smith is looking to kick the football away. With three minutes and 28 seconds left, maybe Harry can pull off with their defense, maybe getting a turnover to get it back to the maybe score one more time before the end of the first half. And the kick is up. Oh, man, that's a booming kick. It's going to be fielded about the 12-yard line. And he's going to be tackled right about the 15-yard line. And that was number two, Nick Holmes, with the catch. Three minutes, 21 seconds. First and 10, Western Heights Jets. Patrick, do you think Hera can score another touchdown in this time? I think that with this Hair Panthers defense, anything is possible. Play clock is winding now. 23 seconds left to go, and uh, Western Heights isn't even over the ball yet. They haven't lined up. They need to kind of hurry up if they are going get to the, get the snap off here. They got 12 seconds. With about three seconds left to go on the play clock. They're going to hand it off. That play is going to get blown up. Good cool. grief. That was in on the play. That was going to be number 22, Isaiah Osborne. And that was Alan Thompson handing off to Ben Sparks, number six. That's going to bring up second about 15 here for the Western Heights offense. Patrick, if they can get a touchdown, maybe they can get a safety. It's getting to the point where, honestly, I think Western Heights might about have negative yards here in this game. You know what? They actually might, especially with that last uh, drive at, like, 31 and 3. And that one is going to be tackled again for a loss. Holy cow. I don't think I've ever seen play like this in real life. 
that was Ben Sparks again. I feel kind of bad for him. Like, sometimes you see this in Madden, like on yeah. a video game. But when have you seen, what is that, like seven consecutive tackles for loss? Something like that, yeah. I don't think Western Heights has had a positive play in this quarter. I, I could be I could be wrong on that, but it just it just really feels like this Panthers defense is absolutely just dominating here. If they keep it as up, they got a good shot for the playoffs. Here's a snap. Walker Johnson. He's, he's gonna go for it. That's his ah! safety. Oh, they're gonna oh. say it's. A, they're gonna call it an incomplete pass. Oh my goodness. I think he was. I think his knee was down. Yeah, was Alan I Thompson. really think his knee was down. I feel like he was on the ground. Man. Okay. There. Okay. To be fair, the refs had a better view than we did. Comma, but. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, you, you know, you know, I just. It's going to be fourth down and about 20 here for Western Heights. Are they, are they bringing on their punting unit? A minute and 32 seconds left to go here on the clock. Honestly, Hera might, might score 39 in the first quarter. If they can stop this kick, then they could. Well, let's see what happens, folks. Here's the snap. It's a good snap. Here's the punt. It's a relatively high and short punt. It's going to be scooped up. He's running. So the 20, the 10. And that's He's right. That's for a touchdown. Oh, my goodness gracious. What a flag of a play. <sighs> Wait, who was that, number eight? Yes, I'm sorry. That was number eight for the Harrow Panthers. That's Brody Byers. That young man has potential. If I've ever seen it, of course, his big brother, Brian Byers, a few years back, was the quarterback and the kicker and the punter and a safety and a linebacker. And now he's a firefighter. He just <laughs> does everything. Let's see what the penalty was here. Oh, please, come on. If this is against hair, I'm going to cry. During the return, first look back, block in the back. No. Oh, good grief. It's going to be first and ten for the Panthers. And they're going to spot the ball. Patrick, that was, that was such a good run. That was such a good catch. It, it was a blindside block. Oh, never mind. So they're, are they going to do 15 yards from the spot of the foul? Catch was made around the four, or sorry, the pickup was made around the forty, right? Yes. So that was a about a forty-yard kickoff return. But they're going to have the ball first and ten here at the twenty-four-yard line with a minute and seventeen seconds left to go. So around a run of fifteen yards there. Okay. On on the return? Yes. No, it was about forty yards. Oh no, I meant uh, w uh, subtracting the penalty. Yes, yes. Joey wants to throw the ball. He's running out. Dev McCraig picks up a block. Luke Sellers catches the football, and he's going to be brought down. By number 31, Brandon Bogle. That's going to be a pickup of about 11 yards to go. So it's going to be first and 10 again for the Harrod Panthers. Sorry, on that last play, I was meaning a gain of 15. Okay. Um... Yeah, that that yeah, that's a that's a first down for the Panthers. Come on, guys, move the sticks. Right? No. Personal foul. Oh. Surely they didn't call that against Devin McCraig because that was just a textbook. That was just a textbook block. Uh. There's still a minute eight left. Per personally. And I say this every single week that I'm broadcasting. Yeah. If I was down there wearing the zebra stripes, then my opinion would matter. I'm up here in the press box holding a microphone, so my opinion doesn't matter. But I, I just don't agree with that call. But, you know, there's really nothing you can do about it. Joey wants to throw it deep, and Braden Palmer is going to 
bounce off of his hands. Sixty three seconds left to go here. It's going to be second down and I think thirty two yards to go. Following two personal foul penalties called against the Harrow Panthers. I but I think they moved the sticks forward but still assessed the penalty. So I really, I really don't understand what's going on. I don't think it should be 32 yards to go. Braden Palmer is going to make the catch on third down for a gain of seven yards on the play. With 45 seconds. Looks like Braden Palmer is shaking up after the catch. I sure hope he is all right. He is a weapon on all sides of the ball. Seventeen seconds left to go in the first half. Third down and 26 yards to go. They're going to throw the football here. Here's the snap. And Joey just throws it over the head of Walker Johnson. Five seconds left to go. It's fourth down. Why not go for it, you know? Yeah. Why not? You could just take a knee, but what, what's the fun of that? Fourth and 26 here. Five seconds left to go. And they're going to take wow. a knee here. And going into halftime, ladies and gentlemen, your Hera Panthers lead the Western Heights Jets 32 to 0. You know what, William? I think we ought to show them this uh, this hype video from yeah. Mr. Brandon Gibson. What do you think? Let's do it. Hey, folks, check this out. Man, this might be something lethal. Like a beast that can't be tamed. This the kind of rage you can't contain. Yeah, this might be something lethal. You can really see the flames. Feeling like it's borderline insane. Man, this might be something lethal. Something lethal. Yeah, this might be something lethal. Something lethal. Feel it coming, feel it coming. The pressure start thumping, ain't no running, ain't no running. It might cause a rave, all my people start jumping. You can feel the blood, should it get your blood pumping? Okay, okay, you better take a seat. Don't step inside the kitchen if you cannot take the heat. It's looking like a beast, guaranteed to flame the streets. It's a jungle outside, tell me who can tame a beast. Something lethal, like a beast that can't be tamed. This the kind of rage you can't contain. Yeah, this might be something lethal. You can really feel the flames, feeling like it's more Welcome to the valley, it'll eat you alive. It'll hit you out of nowhere like a thief in the night. Ain't no way you can hide. It came seeking a fight. Push the pedal to the metal, better keep up the stride. Last week, ladies and gentlemen, your hair Panthers took on the McLeod Redskins and just utterly dominated the entire ball game. They scored 36 points in the first half, and, uh, and then, of course, the freshman came in and there wasn't any scoring after that. So here is what the schedule looks like coming up next week. You've got Seminole at home. Now, that's going to be an interesting matchup because last year, Seminole beat us close at home. Or we, Seminole beat us close by one touchdown at Seminole. The year before that, Seminole beat us close at home. The year before that, we lost close to Seminole <laughs> at Seminole. So this year, we've got Seminole our place. We've yep. got all the momentum on our side. It looks like we're going to come off two big wins here going into that game. 
And currently Seminole is playing Tecumseh. Let's see if I can find the score on that game. Seminole is up 8-7 to seven at Tecumseh. Now on this year, Seminole. Patrick, my prediction for that game is that we're going to win by about two touchdowns. Now Seminole beat Shawnee, but they lost to Canadian. And so that's really hard to tell because Seminole is 3A. Yep. Shawnee is 6A. They beat Shawnee. All right. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think I know where Canadian is. I don't know what division they play in, but they lost zero to fifty-five, mm -hmm. and so that's just going to be a really interesting thing to see if they can pull it off against the Tecumseh Savages. All right. So next week we got Seminole at home, and I just think that's going to be a really interesting matchup. But I feel good. I really do. I feel really good about that incoming matchup there that we've got with the Seminole Chieftains. All right. And then after that. Right after that, we're going to get to travel to Blanchard and then travel to Tuttle. And that's probably going to be the toughest two games that we have on our schedule. Yep, especially Blanchard for sure. Year in and year out, you've got here here in our uh, here in our division, we got Blanchard, Tuttle, Newcastle, and Bethany. And year in and year out, any four of those are always deep in the playoffs. And so it's just really important here that, uh, you know, the Panthers, if they're going in that Blanchard game 3-0, and Right, we're traveling to Blanchard. It's a really beautiful field. They've uh, got new stuff. They got a new press box. Last time we were there, it was so cold. I was yeah. so cold. I was really freezing. Um, last year, uh, last time they also had fireworks. They did have fireworks, and I I enjoyed that. That was fun. Yeah, it was. Yeah, so that's that's going to be a fun road trip out to Blanchard here in a couple yeah. of weeks, and that'll be of course on September 22nd. So it'll probably be a little bit warmer than it was last year. Uh, all that being said. The Panthers need to go into Blanchard ready to go. Yep. And if they can beat, Bla beat Blanchard, they're going to roll into Tuttle with all of the momentum in the world. And, you know, that that's honestly going to be a toss-up because we can go over here to Max Preps. And if you guys aren't following um, Max Preps, if you don't have the uh, app on your phone, you need to invest in that because you can look at all kinds of high school football scores all over the world. Now, Blanchard is currently 1-0. and They're playing against Piedmont. Uh, Blanchard, just a really fantastic um, team. Now, they uh, are throwing the ball more than they're rushing. They've got um, 127 yards per game, their leading receiver, and their leading rusher is 68 yards per game. And so you just you just know that they're uh, – and their quarterback is a senior, Carson Cooksey. He's got a 150.4 QBR, which is really good. So, yeah, just we need to be on the lookout for Blanchard. And then let's let's take a let's take a gander over here at the Tuttle. Tuttle is playing at Noble. They're leading 35 to 0. Tuttle is going to be a force to be reckoned with. Tuttle year in and year out is always a force to be reckoned with. Those guys honestly might win the division. I hope the Panthers can give them a good fight. And yep. I'm not going to count the Panthers out because oh, we no. don't know we don't know what they look like against the tougher competition in our division. They haven't played a division game yet. Yep. And so opening against opening against Blanchard is going to be going to be tough, but you know that's fine. We can just pin our ears back and we can go in. Following uh, Blanchard and Tuttle, we get Tecumseh at home. We get New Newcastle at home. I feel I feel like we can. Those are two winnable games. Yep. I really do. Last year, um, Tecumseh uh, beat us by one touchdown in the last quarter of the game. Yep. You remember that? I do. And we were heartbroken. It was such a good yeah. game. They played them close. Newcastle last year, they just they just threw the ball all over our secondary. Yes, they did. Our secondary has gotten bigger, stronger, faster, more knowledgeable of the game. That that there's a good shot there that we we could win two of those games. Bethany, I don't know what Bethany looks like, but in years past they've been state title contenders. Yep. That's going to be a tough game at Bethany, playing at Southern Nazarene University, and then we'll also be traveling to Classen. In years past, Classen we have been able to play pretty competitively, and Bridge Creek, Bridge Creek. <laughs> Bridge Creek. So really, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Out of the next nine games, I think Hera has a legitimate shot to win seven of them. Yep. Especially my Blanchard game. The only problem with that one is that if we win this game tonight, win the next game against Seminole, Blanchard will be expecting us. They won't be oh, a surprise from the Panthers. They'll be ready for us. Yeah, I think I agree with that. But really, it, it just comes down to hard work, yep. pinning your ears back, playing well-disciplined football, and just honestly just doing the best you can. Mm -hmm. And that's all we can ask out of these boys. And they don't have to go undefeated, you know. Nope, nope. 
they don't have to win the state championship. I mean, if they do, that'd be really cool. That'd be amazing. But we're proud of them either way. They've just been playing so stinking good these last couple of games, and they've just been so fun to watch. I have to say, I'm already proud and satisfied with the McLeod win. I'm proud of that, too. I'll be proud of, Lord willing, this win tonight here. Yep. Um, 32 points is a really tough lead to uh, overcome in one half. But, you know, it could be done. Uh, this game's not over. We've still got another 24 minutes left of football to play. But, yeah, I think, honestly, if we start the season 3-0, and if you drop a game to Blanchard and tu uh, Tuttle, but then you win Newcastle and Tecumseh, Claston, and Bridge Creek, you're still a 7-1 team, you know? Yep. And so that's that's a playoff. That's like not even the bottom seed of the playoff. That's you win two or three games in the playoff, and, you know? Yeah. I think Hare is going to look really good this year, you know? Hare has got a shot for the uh, championship. I, I don't know about that just yet. Just yet? Yeah. Just yet. I think there's a lot of teams in the state that still have to be reckoned with. But who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Honestly, I'm, I'm not going to count them out, you know. I think the Oklahoma Sooners look really good this year. I don't think they can win the national championship. But maybe they can. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know who's good. I don't know if Alabama's any good. I don't know if Texas is any good. Yeah. Georgia looks not as good as they were last couple of years. Yeah. Although, if the Georgia Bulldogs do three feet and make history, that'd be just really fun to watch. Anyway, let's go ahead and see if we can get you, get you some halftime score updates here. From around the state, of course, on the Squirtle app here in Class 4A, Tuttle is at Noble. Listen, Tuttle is leading 35-0 to 0 at halftime at Noble. Noble is a respectable football program. Noble gives everybody grief year in and year out, so that's going to be a really tough one to watch. Clinton is hosting Heritage Hall. Heritage Hall is a respected football program. Clinton won the state title, I think, last year. It's 28-28. to 28. I think Heritage Hall... I don't think they're 4A. I think they're in a lower class since they're a private school, but I could be wrong. Of course, Mr. Gavin Freeman for the Oklahoma Sooners came out of Heritage Hall there in Edmonds. Yep. Um, number three, McAllister is at number 10, Ada. Um, that's the game is 13 to 12. McAllister leads there in the second quarter. Um, Bethany is hosting Woodward. Bethany is also in our conference, and they lead 26 to 14. Newcastle is hosting Plainview, and the score is 21 to 7. And uh, let's see if I can find another one of our in-conference games there. Um, Tecumseh Seminole, that's 8-7. to seven. Seminole leads Tecumseh. Um, I'm still looking. I'm sorry, folks. Blanchard is losing to Piedmont 0-14. to 14. And so, it's, it's you know, who knows? Honestly, who knows what, uh, what Blanchard's going to do this year. Obviously, I want the Blanchard Lions to do well, but who, kn who knows? Yeah. Um, and then Classen. In years in years past, we've had Classen in our division, and we just haven't really had much much issue beating Classen. Yep. But um, I don't know who Southeast is, but Classen beat them sixty nine to six. Okay. That's so um, that's going to be on the lookout because I believe Classen is going to be the last game of our schedule this year. Interesting. Okay. So you know this division doesn't look the same year in and year out. So who knows? Honestly, who knows what's going to happen? Anyway, folks, this has been a little halftime breakdown. We're going to go and we're going to hear a word from our sponsors. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a few minutes for some more Hera football action. Allegiant Marketing Group produces inbound lead generation for our clients through integrated traditional and digital campaigns. We continuously develop new strategies, tactics, and productive efficiencies so you can reach your target market and get a measurable return on investment. This fast-paced world demands for your products and services to be presented at the moment your buyers need them. Targeted and innovative marketing creates your success. Call AMG today, your marketing partner. Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation and imaging works seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Dieselhorst get you back on the field. Backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and off. Ortho Plus is an orthopedic urgent care. If you go to a regular emergency room, you're going to be evaluated by somebody who does everything. With orthopedic urgent care and with Keith Holloman, you're getting an orthopedic trained physician assistant. Hi, 
I am tech. I am tech. I am tech. I am tech. We are tech. The way you used to access healthcare previously, I think that's kind of out of date. I think Ortho Plus and Calvin were trying to get patients access to him and then have the assurance that you'll be referred to the right people. That's why I think the partnership is so good. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Stream with Pioneer iVideo and more. Live, recorded, on demand, all in HD. Easily find and watch your favorite shows and movies. Anywhere, on any device, perfect for the entire family. And easy to use. Enjoy Pioneer iVideo today. Oklahoma's number one high school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at Scordle.com slash stream. At Maples Nixon Diesel Horse, we've helped a lot of people, and our goal was to treat each and every person like a friend. And as a friend, we've got your back always. We understand what you're going through. Being lawyers is what we do, but it's not all that we are. We care. We'll stand beside you throughout the entire legal process, not just as lawyers, but as your friends. We are Maples Nicks and Diesel Horst, and we are here to help. Is it time for your school or business to purchase a new phone system? Give the experts at Versatile Networks a call. In most cases, we can provide a phone system with brand new phones for less than your current monthly bill. Call us for a free quote today. Allegiant Marketing Group produces inbound lead generation for our clients through integrated traditional and digital campaigns. We continuously develop new strategies, tactics, and productive efficiencies so you can reach your target market and get a measurable return on investment. This fast-paced world demands for your products and services to be presented at the moment your buyers need them. Targeted and innovative marketing creates your success. Call AMG today, your marketing partner. Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation and imaging works seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Dieselhorst get you back on the field. Backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and off. Ortho Plus is an orthopedic urgent care. If you go to a regular emergency room, you're going to be evaluated by somebody who does everything. With orthopedic urgent care and with Keith Holloman, you're getting an orthopedic trained physician assistant. I 
I am tech. I am tech. I am tech. I am tech. We are tech. The way you used to access healthcare previously, I think that's kind of out of date. I think Ortho Plus and Calvin were trying to get patients access to him and then have the assurance that you'll be referred to the right people. That's why I think the partnership is so good. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Stream with Pioneer iVideo and more. Live, recorded, on demand, all in HD. Easily find and watch your favorite shows and movies. Anywhere, on any device, perfect for the entire family. And easy to use. Enjoy Pioneer iVideo today. Oklahoma's number one high school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at Scordle.com slash stream. At Maple's Nicks and Diesel Horse, we've helped a lot of people, and our goal was to treat each and every person like a friend. And as a friend, we've got your back always. We understand what you're going through. Being lawyers is what we do, but it's not all that we are. We care. We'll stand beside you throughout the entire legal process, not just as lawyers, but as your friends. We are Maples, Nicks, and Diesel Horst, and we are here to help. experts at Versatile Networks a call. In most cases, we can provide a phone system with brand new phones for less than your current monthly bill. Call us for a free quote today. Allegiant Marketing Group produces inbound lead generation for our clients through integrated traditional and digital campaigns. We continuously develop new strategies, tactics, and productive efficiencies so you can reach your target market and get a measurable return on investment. This fast-paced world demands for your products and services to be presented at the moment your buyers need them. Targeted and innovative marketing creates your success. Call AMG today, your marketing partner. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and, ba boys and girls, we are back here in Western Heights, Oklahoma. Panthers, I believe, are going to kick the football away to begin the second half. And can we just take a moment to appreciate the wonderful graphic that, uh, Hair of Football posted on Instagram. So if you guys are not following them, go ahead and follow at Panther Football on, uh, I think that's what it is. Maybe it's Hair of Panther FB on Instagram. Let me, let me go check. It's Hair of Panther FB on Instagram. So go give them a follow so you can stay up to date with everything that the Hair Panthers are doing. Right now they only have 340 followers. And if there's like 1,500 people watching this right now, which I actually didn't check the stats at halftime, but, you know, why, why, we can we can take a minute to do that. Yeah, we can do that. William, what is your prediction on how many people have viewed our live stream tonight so far? I'm going to say since it's an away game, around 
400. 400? I think it's going to be more than last year since it's no or last week since it's an away game. So here we've got Hera at Western Heights. No, you were dead on the money. 346. Listen, there's 346 people. If you're not following Hera, yeah. Hera Panther FB on Instagram, go ahead and give them a follow. And if you're not subscribed to the Late Kick Podcast with, yeah. podcast with Josh Pate, go ahead and follow him. He's on YouTube. He's on Spotify. I'm sure he's on Apple and Amazon and all of the other ones. Yeah, guys, go ahead and uh, check that out. So. And Go ahead. And guys, if you're not subscribed to Next Level Garbage on YouTube, go ahead and do that. And it, while we're just in the mood of giving people shout-outs, if you uh, want to go ahead and check out Hofeld Media LLC on uh, on YouTube, a uh, large majority of the gear we're using tonight for this broadcast, especially these microphones, um, some other gear that we're using, is sponsored and provided for by Hofeld Media LLC. And a guy who happens to own that, his name is Patrick. He's pretty cool. He does some good yeah. work. If you need senior pictures, if you need a commercial done for your business, if you need professional headsets, if you need a new website built and designed, um, if you need drone pictures of your building, uh, literally anything you need that has to do with media. I didn't make this graphic here on the screen. Uh, somebody else did that. But I can do something like that for you. Yeah. Don't be afraid to reach out to Hofeld Media, LLC. And it looks like we are getting back to the football action here in western Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And, uh, yeah, I kind of thought we were driving out to Mustang, and then we went north instead of south. So we are just north of the turnpike here in western Oklahoma City, just out a little ways. You can still see the uh, top of the Devon Tower glowing. We've got a Will Rogers World Airport off to the right. We've honestly got a really pretty view. Right across the street is the headquarters for Hobby Lobby and Mardell. Shout out to uh, the Green family. I'm a student at Oklahoma Baptist University, and yeah. they take really good care of us, so we do appreciate them. They just gave you guys the Green campus. Yeah, they did. Uh, St. Greg's University is now a part of uh, Oklahoma Baptist University, thanks to uh, Mr. Green. Is his name Bob? Bob Green? Uh, I don't know. David Green. David Green. I was close. See, I thought his name was Bobby Lobby, then I realized. <laughs> 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 no, I'm just, I'm just playing. All right, folks, here it is. Third quarter of action here from Western Heights so far. I uh I think I genuinely I don't know this I haven't been keeping track of stats um I don't know if Hera actually has I'm sure they do surely they do but um I think Western Heights might have negative yards yardage in the first half the Hera Panthers defense has just been playing absolutely out of their mind Brendan Smith is here to kick off to begin the second half of play honestly Patrick I would be surprised if they did not have negative yardage after those last two drives. I, I really think there were seven or eight consecutive plays for negative yards. That kick is going to go into the end zone. Brandon Smith has found his stride. That was Nick. <laughs> <laughs> good grief. He just gave a good uh, shoulder bump there to Coach <laughs> Ricky Bleak. I believe that's who it was. And that's going to go for a touchback. First and ten for the Western Heights Jets here from the 20. That should be spotted, I think, at the 25-yard line. Yes. There's really not much of an atmosphere here tonight in Western Heights. There's probably, I think there might be more people in the stands for Hera than there are for Western Heights. It's also kind of strange to be on the home side on an away game. Yeah, this is a... Definitely a different experience than what we're used to, but, I mean, who am I to complain, right? Yeah. First and ten for the Jets here. They've got two receivers to the left, one receiver to the right. They've got a quarterback and a halfback and the fullback, and that play is going to be – he's going to be tackled after a gain of maybe two on the play. That was Jakaius Peterson on the run. You don't see many teams using a fullback nowadays. Mostly they'll just line up with a quarterback and a halfback there in the backfield and just put their receivers out in a tight end. But, you know, honestly, the fullback, it's a, it's a staple of the uh, football game. It's just kind of fading out as it becomes less popular in modern formations. But having that extra guy in the backfield to block, you know, if you want, if you're really feeling frisky, you can pretend like your Army, your Navy, your Air Force and run the triple, triple option, you know, like – it's it's a, it's a good play, you know. Yeah. Here's the snap. He wants to throw it. He's going to sling it out. He's caught by number four, and the tackle is going to be made. 
and that was by Wallace. number eight, I believe. I think that's going to be Brody Byers on the tackle. Yeah. Was that number five? Now that's going to bring up third down and eight to go here for the Western Heights Jets. They've still got their starters out on defense. Braden Palmer's out there floating around uh, about the 35-yard line playing. I don't know if he's really playing safety or cornerback or what he's playing. Looks yeah. like he's playing safety right now. Walker Johnson wants oh, to yeah. shoot the gap, and he's, he's, he's through. Oh, my goodness. He almost had that quarterback. Quarterback rolls out, and he's still going to be short of the first down by maybe three yards. That was Alan Thompson on the run. And as the quarterback. I mean, surely Western Heights is going to go for it here with a uh, short yardage to go. Yep. Walker Johnson is really bringing heat this entire game. He's just going for it. Well, Western Heights is putting on their punting unit as uh, they're going to call an out of bounds at the uh, after a gain of only three on the play, bringing up fourth down and five yards to go here. Looks like uh, back deep to receive is going to be number nine, Jackson Wilson for the Hare Panthers. Here's the snap. It's a low oh, snap. Slow. It bounces on the ground. He's going to pick it up, but he's going to be tackled oh, inside the – Oh, recovered. I think, I think Hare got the football. I think so. Either way, it's going to be Panther football at the uh, four-yard line? Yeah. Five-yard line? Do we know who was the person who recovered it? Um, it looks like – I don't know, honestly. Uh, if I would have known how far away we were from the field, ladies and gentlemen, I would have brought binoculars. Um, I've never been to the stadium before, so honestly, that's on me. That's a lack of preparation. I take responsibility for that. Important thing is, it's going to be, they're spotting it at the five-yard line. First and goal here, Panthers. Joey and Devin McCraig in the backfield. Here's the snap. Play is blown dead. Why was the play blown dead? Is there a timeout call? It looks like Western Heights is taking their first charged timeout okay. of the half. And so uh, we're also going to take a quick time out here. Let's hear a word from our sponsors. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back in about 30 seconds. Don't go anywhere. It's Friday Night Lights in Oklahoma. Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation and imaging works seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Dieselhorst get you back on the field. Backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and off. And after a quick hiatus, we are back for some more hair of Panther football action. Your Panthers lead 32 to 0. If you are just now joining us, my name is Patrick Hofeld. And I'm William Little. And we are your broadcasters for this evening and for the rest of your season. We are so thrilled and we are so honored to be the voice of Hair of Panther football on Squirtle.tv for y'all. Here's the situation, folks. It's going to be first down, five yards to the goal line. Hare Panthers looking to score. They're going to direct snap to Walker Johnson. He's going to cut inside, but he's going to be dropped for no gain on the play. Second down and goal from the five-yard line here for the Hare Panthers. Like good defense play there by the uh, Western Heights Jets. Go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, no, it's all good. Uh, exactly what I was saying was when you brought up the defense. Was He was taken down by number 33, Kip Davis. Good job, Davis. Way to play ball, son. Hera's in a really bizarre formation, but they're just gonna they're just gonna pound the rock. They're gonna hand it off to Walker Johnson. He's gonna lower his shoulder, ladies and gentlemen. That's another Hera Panther touchdown! Panthers in pay dirt. That's gonna bring the score up to 38 to 0. Pending the extra point, it might be 39. Should the Panthers decide to go for two, it's gonna be 40 yards or 40 oh. points even. They're going for the kick. Going for the point. 39 points pending here on the scoreboard. Already they have scored more points than they scored last week against McLeod, and they have allowed just the same number of points, which is zero. The kick is up, and the kick is good. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, your Hera awesome. Panthers lead the Western Heights Jets 39-0 to zero with eight minutes, 38 seconds left to go here in the second, uh, well, in the third quarter of play. 
second half, there's probably going to be about 20 minutes left to go in the ball game. Patrick, right before they lined up, I was about to say, I thought they were going to go for a two-point punt. I guess they didn't. Brendan Smith is really coming into stride here. He's uh, kicked a ball into the end zone for a touchback, and he's starting to make those extra points. Yep. And so I really feel like Harris special teams is we, – we said at the beginning of this game, Hera has not been able to do well on those extra points, and now they are. So uh, I guess Hera is just about playing just as well as they possibly can be. Yep. The only thing, if we're going to get nitpicky here, yep. the only thing that I believe that the Hera Panthers can do any better is discipline. Yep. There's just been too many fouls this play for my or this game for my liking. They had those two unsportsmanlike penalties at the end of the last, last half, and it was it was third down and 36 yards to go, and you, that's just that's just not acceptable for this Hair Panthers squad. And they cost them dearly those penalties. One bring them back to around 30 yards, mm -hmm. and the other one costing them a, a touchdown. And like I was saying last game, they really do need to tighten up their discipline. If they do, they be killers. Now. When you do a case study on somebody like Nick Saban at Alabama, the reason that his teams are always so successful is because he has the most well-disciplined squad on the field. Here's the kick. It's up. It's a shorter one than last time. And he is going to be tackled at the 20-yard line. And it looks like that was number two, Nick Holmes, with the catch. Anyway, the point I was trying to make is that uh, – Discipline wins football games, right? Yep. You can have the most talented squad in the world, but if you can't be disciplined, if you can't, you know, if, you, if you're making silly mistakes, if you're getting personal fouls, that's mm -hmm. that's really going to shoot yourself in the foot. And if you want if you want to go head-to-head -head with Blanchard, if you want to go head-to-head -head with Tuttle, Newcastle, or Bethany, you just need discipline. Yep. So I really feel like once the Panthers take care of that, they will be a force to reckon with here in a Class 4A Division Two. Coming into this game, Max Preps actually has the Hera Panthers ranked number two in Division 4A for the simple fact that they had a shutout last week and they had a bigger point differential than almost anybody else in the state except for one team, which uh, scored 42-0, to zero, but that was also their second win, and I believe that was McLean Science and Tech, and I'm not really sure where that is. Maybe it's down in McLean County down by, uh, you know. Do we know how they're doing uh, tonight? Tonight? Well, what do you what do you mean? I mean, are they playing tonight? McLean? Yes. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure I could find out. We can do that here in just a little while. Don't don't let me forget. But right now we've got Western Heights lined up with yep. uh, three receivers to the left, one receiver to the right, and uh. it looks like that's going to be a false start. Probably going to be against Western Heights. Their receivers jumped off sides, but of course it could have also been a. Uh, yep, they are going to call that there on the <laughs> offense. Now it's going to be first down and 15 yards to go here. For a second there, I was afraid that the uh, defense had jumped to the neutral zone, but I do believe that it was the penalty on the wide receivers there for Western Heights. They're going to kind of come out in a uh, somewhat, okay, I thought, thought they were lining up in a peculiar formation, yes. but the quarterback was just taking the play. So they're going to have one receiver to the right side of the field, three receivers to the left side of the field, uh, a running back alongside the quarterback in the backfield. Behind the quarterback is Derek Washington. Here's the snap. They want to throw it. Oh. He rolls out. He's looking for somebody to throw it to. And that pass is caught. Oh, and that's going to be a gain of about 10 yards to go. I think he's going to be just short of the first down. Yeah, it's going to be second down and one yard to go. Excellent play executed by Samaj Sanders, number four. Great job, Western Heights. If they can get some momentum building, then the Panthers may not have a shutout here. It's going to be second and one yard to go. Look for them to run the football here to maybe get one of their few first downs this game. And he's going to – quarterback's going to keep it himself, but he is going to be oh. dropped for another loss. There is going to be a flag down on the play. Um, it looks like number four and number six were uh, having some – I don't know, so having some beef maybe. I don't know. That's where the flag came in at. It's on the near side 40-yard line, so let's see what the call was. Otherwise, it's going to be third and about six here for the Western Heights Jets. They are waving off the flag, and so it's going to be third down and officially 
Four yards to go here for Western Heights. Now the clock is going to wind. Six minutes, 24 seconds left to go in the third quarter of action. Three receivers to the left, one receiver to the right. Here's the snap. They're going to want to throw the football again. They're going to be facing pressure, but there's going to be a hold. And that it's uh, going to be thrown out of bounds. There wasn't a flag for holding, which is uh, really honestly quite surprising to me. But, you know, that's just fine. I'm not a referee. I'm just the broadcaster. But that guy had every bit of the outside of <laughs> Walker Johnson's jersey there. So. Yep. Uh, six minutes and one second left to go here. It's going to be fourth down. I believe Western Heights is going to go for it, which I, I really that's all they can do at this point. After the uh, Panthers ran back a punt for a touchdown, which was then called back for holding, but, you know, better not risk it, right? Here's the snap. They're going to want to throw the football. He lets it fly. Oh, and he's going to catch the ball. Great play there made by number four. Smosh Sanders. Good job, Sanders. That was a great play. He just jumped up. He went and got the ball. That's all you can ask for him. Of course, number five, Cash Flint there on the defense. First and ten for the Western Heights Jets. Having some success through the air. He's going to throw it again, and he's going to get – Oh, open over the top. Oh, oh. That's, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be a 55-yard touchdown pass by Western Heights. It will not be a shout-out tonight. The Panthers' hunt for a goose egg has officially ended here. And I think there is finally an atmosphere on the Western Heights side. Let's see if Western Heights wants to go for one or two here. Looks like they're going to go for two. Here's the snap. He's looking to throw. He throws it, and that ball is batted down. Ladies and gentlemen, Hera Panthers, 39, Western Heights, 6. Now, we saw this last year in the Newcastle game. Newcastle started throwing the football across the yard. Panthers' cornerbacks just couldn't keep up. So I think uh, Western Heights may have found a weakness in this Hera Panthers defense. Yep. It's going to be nearly impossible this year to run the ball against Hera, but if, if, if a team has any good passing game, well, that might be something that needs to be addressed in practice. But really, that's all you can do is address it in practice and hope for the best, you know. Yeah. This isn't, this isn't college. This isn't the NFL. This is Oklahoma Class 4A high school football, you know. Yep. And so, really, it's, it's not that big a deal, you know, that uh, – that they scored on you like that. You just need to go into practice and try to correct it and see what you can do. Just try your best and play your best football. That's all anybody's asking of them. If uh, Harrow's coach was Nick Saban, he would have shattered a headset. <laughs> Nick Saban has been known to throw his headset a time or two. Interesting fact, Nick Saban is not only going to be on Aflac commercials this year. By the way, alongside Deion Sanders now, which is just the funniest thing I've ever seen in my entire life, Deion Sanders and Nick Saban a talking duck on TV. But also, uh, Nick Saban is officially going to be joining the Pat McAfee show uh, every single week. So I don't really watch Pat McAfee. That's just not my vibe. Uh, but it's it's fun that they're going to have Nick Saban on there. So yeah. if, you're, if you're so inclined to watch uh, Pat McAfee, he just, he just uses too much foul language for my uh, personal preferences. But, you know, looks like Western Heights is also having trouble teeing up the ball just like Hera has. It remains a windy night here in Oklahoma City. Now here's a whistle. Kick is short. It's a squib. It's going to be scooped up by Braden Palmer. He's going to stay on his feet. He's going to find oh, some room to run. Forward. He's at the 30. He's at the 20. 10, 5. Touchdown, Harrah Panthers. Oh, my goodness gracious, I just cannot believe my eyes what I just saw. Braden Palmer, kickoff return, touchdown. 
Western Heights came out and they uh, scored a touchdown. And Harris said, hey, chill out. Watch yeah. this. It looks like they're going to be going for a kick. Kick is up, and the kick is good. It's good. <laughs> Your Hair Panthers are now leading the Western Heights Jets by 40 points. Now, Western Heights, they've been making some moves on offense. They have been. I don't think at this point they can catch up, but they can probably put some points on this defense. Like you were saying before, I think if they start their passing game, like how they did that last play, they've got a shot at not being a complete shutout. So right now there's four minutes and 54 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Western Heights is getting the ball back. We'll see what they do on offense here. Brendan Smith is just really rounded in form. I don't know if he just had a really great week in practice or what, but he's kicking the ball well on the kickoffs. He is nailing the extra points. That's just good, clean football on special teams for Hera. Yep. And there was no penalties on that last run. So good job. Man, my life is so cool. I, I get to I get to watch football on Friday nights. It's my job. I know, right? I get to watch football on Saturdays. I don't get paid for it, but I still enjoy it. Here's the kick. Another booming kick. It's going to be fielded about the 12-yard line once again. And he is going to be brought down by a combination of number 17 and number 8. Oh, there's a flag on the play. It's going to be Ridley Rance and Brody Byers there making the tackle. That was number five, Derek Washington for the Jets. Brody Byers and Ridley Rance are just both having great games. Of course, Walker Johnson having a good game as well. Let's see where the flag was here. Barring the assessment of the penalty, Western Heights will start. Man, you just really hate to see that. They play really spectacular defense only to have a personal foul assessed against them. Yep. I believe that's going to be the third or fourth personal foul against the Panthers here, and the third quarter's not even over. You know, that's going to total up to 45 to 60 yards in penalties that they have given to Western Heights. You're right about that. I wasn't even thinking about it in that. Th those kind of turns, that can add up to a lot really need to get those penalties under control, gentlemen. But I believe in y'all. Y'all can do it. Just go out there, play some good football. Keep your words to yourselves, you know? Pocket collapses, but he still wants to throw. He's going to throw it, but it's going to be over his receiver's head. That was good defense there by number one, Travis Tabor for the Hare Panthers. That's going to bring up second down and ten here for the Western Heights Jets. I feel like the last few minutes of this game are going to be fun because really neither team has anything to lose at this point. Western Heights, it's a, honestly a predetermined outcome, so they're just going to try and push the ball downfield just as much as they can. Yep. And, you know, Hera, they just need more reps throwing the ball in real games, so I wouldn't be surprised if they throw the ball too. He's going to let it fly. He's got a man. Oh, no, dude. That was so beautiful. He, he was running a slant route right across the top. He jumped up in the air. The ball hit him right on the number, and he dropped it. And really, that's something you can't have as a wide receiver. If the ball hits you in the numbers, you've got to reel that in. I, that was about to be a big play. Instead, it's going to be third and ten here for the Western Heights Jets. But So, Harrow was playing man on the far side. And so, on that slant route, you're running away from your man. So, the quarterback throws it, into you, throws it in front of you and you just run straight into the ball. It was a brilliant play, play design there by the Western Heights coaches. Now, Western Heights has three receivers to the left, one receiver to the right. Probably four down territory here. Here's the, here's the snap. And they're going to throw it once again. And he's going to catch it. That catch was made by number two. Nick Holmes. Good job, Nick. That's going to bring up fourth down and four here for the Jets. 
honestly, Western Heights quarterback, he can he can he can throw the ball really well. His accuracy has been really good. Yep. They're obviously going to go for it here on fourth down. Panthers secondary just needs to come in big and get a stop. If they get past this, they could give them a touchdown. Here's the snap. Pocket is collapsing. It's a fly ball. And Sanders has it again. He's staying on his feet. What a massive gain there in the second half. Like you were saying, if they keep up this passing game, Kara can't stop them. They're just throwing the ball over the yard at will, seemingly. This one might turn into a shootout late here, folks. Two minutes left to go here in the third quarter to play. Western Heights is knocking on the door. Here's the snap. Is that recovered? No, it was incomplete is what it was ruled. It looks to me like he might have picked it up, but, you know. Like I said, I said it once, I'll say it a thousand times. My yep. opinion doesn't matter because I am not a referee in this ball game. It's going to be second and ten for those Western Heights Jets who are all of a sudden out of nowhere, nowhere having really great – Luck. I don't even know if it's luck. I think it's just finding the ghost matchups and playing some backyard football there. Throwing the football. Number four out there on the on the left. What's his name? Number four? Yeah. Samanje uh, Sanders. Yeah, Samanje Sanders. Dude is playing some good football. And the quarterback's going to have to throw that one, one way as he was facing pressure. Walker Johnson managed to break through the line. That's going to bring up uh, third down and ten here for the Western Heights Jets. But – they're in the red zone. They are. They got a shot at making another touchdown here. And if they do, they might be able to really start catching up with Hera. There's simply not enough time on the clock for Western Heights to win this game, but there's certainly enough time on the clock for them to expose the weaknesses of this so far vicious Panthers defense. They're so well coached to stop the run. But now when they're playing this zone defense, their quarterback is having really good luck finding gaps in the coverage. Oh, my goodness gracious. That was a dot. And you were right. He found the gap. Of course, the pass was incomplete, but had the receiver caught it, that ball was just about as perfectly flown it, thrown as it could possibly get. Tight spiral, nice arc. Ball didn't really turn over there, but, man. Coach Bleak is calling his boys up to have some words with him. It is the end of the quarter. We're going into number four, ladies and gentlemen. Don't go anywhere. Here's a word from our sponsors. Ortho Plus is an orthopedic urgent care. If you go to a regular emergency room, you're going to be evaluated by somebody who does everything. With orthopedic urgent care and with Keith Holloman, you're getting an orthopedic trained physician assistant. And we are back here, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Big shout out to the 405. I believe, I think we're still in Oklahoma County, aren't we? Because we're in Oklahoma City. I think so. So yeah, just we're in the same county as uh, Hera. We're just kind of on the far edge of it. Because I, I believe, I believe we're probably at the very edge of the. I think it's uh, Oklahoma County stops in Mustang. Yeah, I think so. We're about. I think Mustang and Yukon and. Yep. Of course, Blanchard and Tuttle are all out on the uh, out in different counties. So I think we're still in Oklahoma County because I believe Western Heights is an Oklahoma County, Oklahoma City school. But I think we're about a mile or a half mile away from the county line. Needless to say, <laughs> this is a cross county rivalry here that we're playing. It's going to be fourth down and ten for the Western Heights Jets from the 18 yard line. So far, they've been throwing the ball really, really well against this Hair Panthers offense. But they've only just started throwing the ball at the beginning of the last quarter, and the clock has been running mostly. So, Three receivers to the right, one receiver to the left here for the Western Heights Jets. Running back in the backfield, but I'm sure they're not going to hand the ball to him. And Walker Johnson comes straight through the line. 
He tried to time it, and he didn't time it well. So the uh, Western Heights Jets are going to get a free, free five yards, making it fourth down and five here for the Western Heights Jets. Now they're going to be at the, excuse me, they're going to be at the 14-yard line. And I believe the offense jumped that time, but it's tough to say. And that is a false start on the offense. <laughs> Once again, it's going to be fourth and ten here for the Western Heights Jets. They just negated the advantage that they gave himself. Everyone's jumpy here. Everybody's on edge. The Panthers don't want to give up another touchdown. The Western Heights Jets desperately, desperately wants another touchdown. You're down by 40 in the fourth quarter. There's not a lot you can do here. Thirty seconds have gone by without a play. Here's the snap. Pass rush is coming, but the ball is up in the air, and it's going to be incomplete. Just good, clean defense there. And the Panthers will take over first and ten. Now, we're in the fourth quarter, right? You're up by 40 points. I really don't think that the Panthers are going to throw the ball at all. First of all, it would just be impolite. Yep. And second of all, they're just going to want to run that clock out, go take a shower, go home, sleep well, wake up, and watch the Sooners play football tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> well, actually, you know, you could sleep in because OU doesn't kick off in, against Southern Methodist until 5. Really? Yeah, which is which is great, you know, primetime game in Norman under the lights. It's going to be beautiful, great atmosphere. I'm, out, I'm getting to go to that game. I'm really excited. Oklahoma State is playing at Arizona State. Okay. That game doesn't kick off until 10.30. 10.30. At night? At night. Oh, my. Yeah. And so it's like, man, do I want to stay up late and watch that? I think the answer is obviously yes. But it's just like kind of an odd. Of course, you know, it is Pac-12 after dark, or the artist formerly known as the Pac-12, as Joey McLaughlin's going to get ahead for about 15 or 20 yards there on the run. Isaiah Osborne picks up a block and completely flattens the man there on the near sideline. Oh, excuse me. I don't believe Joey's in the game anymore. Is he not? That's uh, number 13, Jacob Queen there, checking in at quarterback. Queen in the backfield alongside number 11, Kalen Looney. One receiver to the left, two receivers to the right. Coach Bleak has put in the second string. Looney takes the snap. There's a flag in the play. But he's fighting ahead. He'll be just about a, y a yard short of the first down, pending the outcome of this flag on the play. They are going to call a hold penalty on the offense. It's going to be first down and 20 yards to go for the Hare Panthers. I don't know if the uh, first string line is in or if the second string line is in. Um, but, you know, sometimes even if you're a starter, you know, you're in your block, the guy turns to the outside, you still got to hold his jersey, the ref looks over, and he sees you with a big fistful of shirts and the guy's twisted outside. And that's going to be a hold every time. So Here's the snap. They're going to hand it off to uh, – that's, that's not Looney. That's actually Zach – Crab, and he's gonna fight for maybe a gain of one there on the play. Zach Crab is a freshman wide receiver, uh, 5'7", 135 pounds. May very well be his first varsity carry. But you know, when you're up by 40 points and it's the fourth quarter, I think the freshman ought to be running the ball. Yeah, they totally should. Because you know that does that does two things. You know, first of all, get your freshman real-time snaps and you know you uh you're showing respect to the opponent by not running the score up on them yep but also here's the downside to this when we do go into place blanchard we're not going to be able to put our uh second string in and he's fighting ahead i think that was number 22 isaiah osborne on the carry that's going to bring up third down about 13 here for the hair panthers 
But the thing is, when you do go ahead and you play those tougher games about against your Blanchards, your Tuttles, your Bethany's of the world, right? When your uh, when your starters have only played you know three halves of football instead of six, they might be prone to get a little bit tired there. And so that's just something yeah. you do have to be careful of. You have to be wary. But on the flip side of that, they uh, they're playing less, and so they're going to be better rested for these tougher matchups coming in. So. And they have uh, less of a risk of injuries too. That's correct. And so it's just just like a balanced thing. They're going to hand it off to uh, number. Oh, he's open. Number oh. six, we, William Fleming. He did he? Uh, did he get the first down? Came down by number fifteen, Jeremy Tash. It's going to be a Panthers first down. Really, really great one run there by uh, Fleming. He is a uh, sophomore running back and defensive back. He weighs uh, 145 pounds, stands at 5 foot 10. In the backfield now is number 31, and that's going to be Gage Mosley. He's a ninth grade tight end. He's going to stay on his feet, and he's going to gain six or seven on the play. Man on tackle was number thirty, Caton Reed. Oh, excuse me. I, uh, well, I don't know. I think it was number thirty-one carrying the ball, but also number thirteen was out there. So it was either it was either Mosley or Queen. No, number thirteen, Queen is playing quarterback. So it was number thirty-one, Mosley, on the carry. We've had I think five different ball carriers in the last five snaps, which is just absolutely great for Hera. It's going to be second down and. Three yards to go here for the Panthers. In the backfield, it looks like number 22, Isaiah Osborne. But Queen's going to throw it, but the pass is going to be broken up. Really amazing defense there by number 10 for Western Heights, who is? Uh, Kai Williamson. Good job, Kai. He flew in there, and he uh, broke up the pass. He made the tackle. Textbook defense there. So that's going to bring up third down here for the Panthers and three yards to go. You know, second and short is just a classic, classic passing down. Because if the pass is incomplete, you've still got third and short to run it, get the first down. And if the pass is complete, then, well, you know, you got, got a first down. Completed yeah. pass. Here's the snap. They're going to hand it off with I Isaiah Osborne. He's going to cut to the right. He's going to have the first down. He's going to lower his head, and he's going to pick up maybe an extra 10 yards afterwards. Looks like he was taken down by number 18, Orlando Jacobs. I love to see all these younger guys getting real game snaps and still moving the ball downfield. Yeah. That just shows that Hera is deep at running back. And, you know, once Devin McCraig and Walker Johnson graduate, we will be set. Yes. Because these guys will have had two or three years of snaps under their belt by then. I am honestly really excited to see where Coach Bleak takes this program in the next two or three years. Now, here's the snap. He wants to throw it. And Queen's pass is uh, just over the head of all everybody. I just, I'm not really sure who he's yeah. throwing it to. You know, that's just fine when you're a uh, when you're a freshman. You know, you stand at six five, 170 pounds. Once Joey graduates, you know, yeah, because Joey's a junior, so he'll be coming into his junior year. Maybe he'll be the starting quarterback. He will have yeah. had years of passing experience. Joey goes down, he can step in. You know. Why on earth not, you know? Let the boy play ball. Here's the snap. Um, he's going to keep it himself, and he's going to go ahead for a gain of two or three, but not a ton. The clock has been winding this entire time. There's just about four minutes left to go here in the ball game. Hera might score again. I, I'd like to see him hang half a hundred on him, but, you know. Yeah. If they don't, 46 is more than a, okay. It's still ten more points than last week. So. I want them to make another touchdown just so they can try and make two points. There's a special place in my heart for those two point six. Oh, well, it's going to be third down here and nine yards to go. And if they don't get it, maybe this will be a good opportunity to uh, let them try a long field goal. But they want to throw the ball. Oh, good grief. That's a freshman quarterback mistake. He just threw it right in front of his receiver. Intended target was number 24, Caden Cobb there, and he's a 10th grader. He's uh, listed as a tight end and a linebacker, 5'5", 130 pounds. You know, now would be a good time to try a, like we were saying, a long field goal attempt. Yeah. And who's to say they won't? 
Well, quite frankly, the uh, formation that they're lining up says that they won't. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be fourth down and nine to go. They're going to try something again here. Here's the snap. They're going to hand it off. He's going to cut to the outside, and he's going to have the first oh. down. Taken down by number 28, Keyshawn Terrell Randall. And I believe that was William Fleming on the carry once again. That dude has had two first downs here in this quarter. Honestly, the two things that the Panthers do really well are running the football and stopping the run. And that's just good, basic, fundamental football. And that's what you have to build on year in and year out. You know, if you can run the ball really well, then you can throw the ball later. And if you can't, if you end up in a situation where you're not having so much luck throwing the ball, you can lean back on that lethal running offense. Yep. And I'm not sure if it's actual stats, but I feel like our third and fourth down conversions have been really good these first two games. They, they really have. Isaiah Osborne is back in the backfield alongside of Jacob Queen. Here's the snap. Queen wants to throw the ball, or maybe he just wants to tuck it and run yeah. himself. He stiff arms a man into the dirt. He stays on his feet. He's going to have the first down and some more. They're going to be about the eight-yard line there. Looks like he was taken down by number, is that 28? Yep, 28. First and goal Terrell. from the 10-yard line. First down, Panthers. Clock is winding. 90 seconds left to go in the ball game. Panthers might get another touchdown. They might not. <laughs> Either way, they have come away tonight with a resounding victory over the Western Heights Jets. Here's the snap. They're going to hand it off. That's going to be Gage Mosley on the carry. He's only going to have maybe three yards. Minute, nine seconds. The Panthers kind of feel like they want to hurry, but there's not a lot of hurry to them just because, you know, it's the fourth quarter. Yep. If you get a touchdown, that's great. If you don't, it's also great. Forty-nine seconds left to go in the ball game. Second and goal from the nine-yard line. Jacob Queens in the backfield alongside this time Brody Byers. They're going to run the jet sweep. He's going to be inside, and he's going to be just a couple yards shy. Panthers knocking on the door of a touchdown. I, I do apologize. I didn't see who, uh, who carried the ball on that. They got 24 seconds here to run one more play because it is third down here. 17, 16, 15, 14. This is going to be the last play of the ball game, folks. Either the Panthers get it or they don't. Yep. Either way, they will come away victorious. Queens in the back backfield alongside Joey Byers. Here's the snap, and he's going to take a knee to end the ball game. Ladies and gentlemen, your final score from Western Heights in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, will be Panthers 46 to Western Heights Jets 6. We've had two resounding victories by the Hare Panthers so far. And ladies and gentlemen, I would just like to say a huge thank you to everybody who's watching. All, let's see. Let's see how many we got. This week we have 429 people watching. So we do, we do appreciate all 429 of y'all who watched. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, um, big shout out to Brandon Gibson. Big shout out to Brandon Turner, uh, Jason Turner, excuse me. Jason Turner, Brandon Gibson. Don't forget, if you love college football, subscribe to the Late Kick jo Podcast with Josh Pate. Signing off, my name is Patrick Hofeld. And I'm William Little. And we'll see you guys next week at home against Seminole. God bless. Have a wonderful night.